Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I am here to share with you um, in conjunction with Sew My Style uh, 2019 for the month of February um, how to do a, or three different ways to do a full bust adjustment on a t-shirt or a knit pattern that does not have a bust art. Before I get started, I'm here with Gidget. Um, people are, are started asking what I'm wearing in my videos, so I have to remember to tell you guys. So I'm currently in my McCall's jumpsuit, and I cannot remember the number. It'll be in the description box below, um, because I'm still trying to decide if it's salvageable or not. <laughs> or if I want to save it, or if it needs to move on, or whatever. I've not fixed the hole in the leg yet, um, and it's still not been hemmed, but I'm wearing it around today, trying to decide if it's worth it. So I've got this on today with a Rowan, uh, Megan Nielsen Rowan um, turtleneck. So that's what I've got on today um, to answer those questions. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I have three different ways, um, and I'm really hoping, I have filmed um, the actual tutorial showing you how I do the full bust adjustments, and I'm just really hoping that the quality in the picture is really well, is good. I was having a lot of issues like getting the camera set up just right. Um, ideally, it would be hovering above the table while I'm doing this, and I'm sure there's a contraption for that where you mount your camera and it can like get like overhead shots. I just don't have anything like that. So anyway, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, ask any questions below. Um, and also before I get into this, hit that subscribe button. We have got a whole bunch of new subscribers, which is very exciting. And I have another tutorial for Sew My Style for this month, um, in addition to the makes video, um, to show you what I've made for Sew My Style. And a whole bunch of fun stuff, just for the channel in general, coming up this year. So hit that subscribe button so you get notified whenever I've got new videos posted, which are typically every Tuesday and Friday, unless I've got technical issues, but for the most part, every Tuesday and Friday. So. On that note, I will leave you, and um, again, three different ways. Actually, it's four. You could totally do a traditional full bust adjustment in a knit pattern and just add a dart. And if you have a large difference between your upper bust and your full bust, that may actually be the best way um, for you to add the space that you need in for the bust. Um, and it's not hard to do. A, I mean, the more stable the knit, the easier it is to do a dart in a knit. Um, but yeah, doing a dart with a serger or a, a sewing machine is um, pretty easy and definitely doable. However, I have shown you, so that's one way you could do it, but I've shown you three additional ways that you can do a bust dart and a knit top without adding that dart. So I hope you enjoy. Again, leave me any questions that you might have, and I will see you guys on Friday. Bye. Okay, for today's demonstration, I am going to, I'm sorry, I'm kind of wonky here, aren't I? There we go. I am going to uh, be using the Deer and Dogeve, which is one of our patterns for Sew My Style, um, and I'm going to be doing View B, or View 2, I can't remember. It's the sleeveless version, the one without the yoke, um, just because it's a little easier to demonstrate and to show you how to um, do the full bust adjustment. So first things first, you've got to pick your size. I'm going to show you here in just a second how to um, measure yourself. However, I want you to notice the difference between bust, the um, size bust measurement and the finished bust measurement, as it same with the waist and the hip. You'll notice, for instance, on size 44, I'll try and use the, the um, mouse here, size 44, oh, there we go. Size 44, for instance, has a size bust measure, measurement at 39 and a half, and a finished at 34 and a half. So you'll notice that the finished measurement is less than your bust measurement. That's because negative ease, because it's a knit pattern and it's supposed to fit closely. The same goes for the waist, 31 and a half versus 31 and an eighth. Sorry, that's really small. <laughs> so again, negative ease on your waist. You're gonna wanna take this into consideration when picking your size. Do you like, do you want it skin tight? Um, depending on what weight of fabric you're using, if you're using something a little lighter weight, you may not want it fitting quite as snug and you may want to bump up one or two sizes. Um, you know, you may want it more your waist measurement versus smaller than your waist measurement. So it depends on how you're gonna wear it, um, how thick your fabric is, and, and consequently how comfortable you are with it being tight. So this is definitely drafted to be a very tight fitting top and or dress. 
Okay, that being said, let's talk about measurements. So I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you how to measure yourself to determine, number one, if you need a full bust adjustment and how much of a full bust adjustment. Okay, so sorry about the headshot. I want you guys to be able to see this kind of up close. <laughs> Um, okay, so full bust measurement is the measurement across the fullest part of your bust, or usually like right there at the nipple. Sorry, disregard all the drag lines here. This is kind of a worn out shirt. You want to make sure that your level, or as level as can be, so have someone do this for you or do it in a mirror, that you have the bra on you'll be wearing when you'll be wearing the top or something similar. You want it level, parallel with the ground, and again, as level as can be across the back. And you want it fitting tight. Now you don't want it cutting into you, but you do want it fitting tight against your body. Okay, so that measurement for me is 39 and a half. So now to determine if you need a full bust, you're gonna measure your high bust. And all you're gonna do is raise it up above your boobs and take that measurement above your bust. However, it's still staying at your bra line there at the back. Okay, so that measurement for me is 36 and a half. So I have a three inch difference between my high bust and my full bust, which means I need a full bust adjustment. All right. Okay, so my high bust measurement was 36 and a half. You want to pick your size based on your high bust measurement, not your full bust measurement, if you have a large bust. Most patterns have a two inch difference between their high bust and their bust. That's kind of standard, not all, um, but we're just going to assume that they draft for a B cup and a B cup would be a two inch difference from your high bust to your um, low bust, or yes. <laughs> okay, so my high bust is 36 and a half. So I wanna pick a size based on that. So that would say, I'm kind of in between these two sizes. So 36 and a quarter and 37 and, uh, it's really small, three quarters. Now, I know that I don't want, I don't like things really clinging on me, and since there's so much negative ease on this pattern, I'm actually gonna go up to the 42 size, okay? Just because that's personal preference, but you, you know, if you're in between sizes, just decide, you know, how close do you want it to fit? Do you want it just a little bit roomier? Um, I have a larger waist in comparison to my other measurements. My waist actually puts me up here at 46. Um, but I, yeah, so I don't want it too, I mean, it's going to be tight the way it is. So, yeah, I'm going to pick based on a 42, and I am using a thicker jersey, so that will help mask any, because um, I do want a tight-fitting top, just not super, super tight-fitting. So I'm going to pick mine based on this one, which is 37 and 3 quarters. And again, my actual bust measurement is 39 and a half. So that is a difference of 1 and 3 quarters of an inch. So that is what I need to add and a full bust adjustment across the whole pattern. Now, you're doing it on half of the front bodice, so you actually will only be adding in half of that. So half of one and three quarters is, <laughs> this is me trying to do math, so is seven eighths of an inch. <laughs> so I'm gonna be adding seven eighths of an inch to one half of the front bodice. Okay, so that is where I'm getting that number and how I got to that. Again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. But that is how I'm getting my number of seven eighths. So now I'm going to show you the three different ways that you can do a full bust adjustment on a knit top. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see me okay. I just spent a really long time trying to get a good camera angle here. So I'm hoping you can see everything a-okay. All right. So first things first, here is the front of my um, Jeeve top. Now, I, here, right there, I have um, put the bust apex, which is literally where your nipple is, and the way I found this was I just put this paper up to my body, because you just need a general idea of where this is. So I have marked my bust apex, and again, I really, I'm trying to see if you can see what I'm seeing here. with. Hold on. Hopefully this is working well. <laughs> okay, so first things, I'm going to do just a traditional full bust adjustment. For those of you that have not done one, this is how you would do one on a woven top. Um, something with a dart, without a dart, whatever. 
So first things first, we're going to do your traditional full bust adjustment. So to do that, if you don't have a dart, you're going to draw a line parallel to the grain line. Now this is cut on the fold, so grain line is going to be the fold line, which is right here. And I'm just going to make a line up from the bottom, which, sorry, you're having a hard time seeing. Actually, I'm going to keep this down here because um, it's more important for you to see what's going on up here. So you're just going to make all the way to the bottom of the shirt a line. You're not going to use Sharpie. I just want you to be able to see. <laughs> and then you want to make a line to the exterior of the pattern on the side. And then I like to go just to the um, notch up here in the arm side. Now, for up here in the arm side, you're going to hinge that. So you're going to need to come in the seam allowance, which the seam allowance, I'm pretty sure is 3 8 but it doesn't really, I mean, just make sure you're looking at that on your pattern. Um, but for just, you know, display purposes, it doesn't really matter right now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up from the bottom this line and continue up here, but I'm going to stop at this hinge point right here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more on that. Okay. So I'm going to cut just to this hinge point here, and then I'm going to cut down to the hinge point there. And that looks like this. You don't want to cut through that little seam allowance line that you made right there. That's going to be how you're going to hinge. All right. And now I'm also going to cut from the side up to the darn apex, but not through because we need a hinge point there as well. I'm also going to cut off a lot of this extra paper because this is just unneeded. <laughs> we just don't need all that extra. All right, so, sorry, this is upside down to you for a second, but I will hopefully. All right, so there we go. So now you see everything's kind of loosey goosey. But now you can move your pattern this way and that. Um, and again, we determined that my bust, I needed seven eighths of an inch. So what I like to do is I like to tape down this section here, not the part with the dart because that's got to move, but this section up here and don't go down too low because this is going to need to move too. And I'll, I'll adjust this as I need to so you can see. So I'm just going to put some tape right there to keep that down. And then I like, let's just move this whole section out of the way, to just draw a line. And again, we decided mine was 7 eighths on each side for a total of 1 and 3 quarters. I'm just going to make a 7 eighths line all the way down the pattern. Just makes it easier to line this up. So then the idea is that we're just going to swing this section until it meets that line we just drew. And we've successfully created a dart right there. Okay. You kind of have to pull it down a little bit. You just want everything to lie flat. And your bottom is not going to line up, and that is okay. We will fix that in a second. Sometimes using shorter pieces of tape work a little better too. All right. So I have effectively created a dart in this pattern, which if you have a big enough bust and you really like to have a dart, you can sew a dart in a knit fabric. It typically works better um, with thicker fabric. 
but that is up to you. But there we go. Okay, so my dart, I'm going to just highlight it here so you can see it. You can see my dart right here. It's been created. Now down here at the base, We have a jog in the lengthen and shorten line here. It, I'm really hoping you guys can see this okay. I'm having some real like camera issues. <laughs> the best way to show this. But as you can see, if I go straight across with the lengthen and shorten line um, here, this is quite a bit above. So what I need to do is just find my scissors that I've set down. You're gonna just cut this. it and lengthen it so that once again your line is parallel and then you tape it down so that's just your regular old full bust adjustment you can probably look up much better tutorials on that than what I just showed you but I just wanted to kind of okay so that is an option but this isn't one of the ways so one of the ways that you could sew a knit top is to just ease this dart in. So what I like to do for that, so and by that, I don't ease um, like you would, like for a sleeve cap, I don't put any gathering stitches in, although you could. I literally just stretch the back to fit the front and I will add notches in. So if I measure down from the armhole, my dart starts at, let's see, two and five eighths but you want a, a larger area to spread this out of. So I will do a notch above this by an inch. So let's go above the dart by an inch and below the dart by an inch. Okay? So effectively, <laughs> you've got a two inch space here if you forget about the dart. So you're gonna go down on your back piece one and three quarters and make a dart or make a notch and then go down an additional two inches from that first notch to the second notch for a second, a second notch. And so then you will just be matching your notches when you sew and pulling the back. Um, Cause most knits that you would especially be using with a fitted pattern like this are gonna be very stretchy in the lengthwise and the uh, crosswise width. So you're just gonna pull the back to fit that. And that is a very easy way to do a full bust adjustment. Um, and then you have the extra room you need in the bust um, without putting a dart in. Now again, this works best maybe for smaller full bust adjustments. You get up into the really big ones and um, again, a dart might be your best bet just because you're just gonna get better shape and fit. But that is the first way that we can do a full bust adjustment. So let me show you, which is just easing in your dart. So you will not sew this dart, you'll just ease this extra length in to, uh, by stretching the back to fit. Okay, number two. So here's an identical piece that I've traced off here and I've put um, heavy paper behind it just so you can see a little bit better through the tissue paper. So again, I'm gonna find my apex. I'm literally just shotgunning this right now, <laughs> just for demonstration purposes. And again, you're going to do your full bust adjustment just like you would do for wovens. This time we're gonna pivot the dart. So first things first, I'm going to tape this side down again, just a little bit, just so it's not moving around on me. And I'm gonna make my line again, my 7 eighths of an inch, which is what I determined that I needed. It'll be different for everybody. Well, presumably. Okay, so again, I'm gonna lower this to meet this. So 
use a little shorter pieces of tape here so that I'm not drowning. Okay, and I'll highlight my dart for you again so that you can see where I've added my dart. All right, now this works a little bit better for um, a larger, a little bit larger bust. All right, so I've got my pieces and now we're actually gonna cut into the white paper. I'm going to tape my dart down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a line. We need to get back to the apex, which is right here. So I'm gonna draw a line from the bottom dart leg, and it really doesn't matter bottom or top, to that apex. And now, I'm gonna hinge. I'm gonna cut again from the bottom up to this size um, and stop right at this point, this apex. Then I'm gonna cut from the side and cut in and stop right here at this apex. Okay, so we're gonna have a hinge point at the apex. What I'm gonna do is close my dart which means I'm gonna take the bottom and just swing it closed to the top. And you're gonna notice, swing this around here, that it creates a big dart right down the center, which you probably don't want. We're gonna fix that. <laughs> All right, so we've closed our dart. We no longer have the dart. I'm gonna tape it shut. So then the question is, how do we get back to just our seven eighths that we need? You're going to pivot at the side and pivot it shut, okay? So now <laughs> we're gonna make our pivot point out here. And actually, let's make it at our seam. So we're going to come in for our seam allowance, our three eighths. So now we're going to cut from the apex, a little counterintuitive, through to the hinge point here at the side seam. And again, I'm going to cut a whole bunch of this paper away just to make it easier to see. Excuse the telephone ringing in the background. I turned off my cell phone this time and forgot to turn the house phone off. So now we have our hinge point at the side seam. So now we are just gonna swing this. Oh, sorry. You also have to cut from the outside to the hinge point or it will in fact not hinge. All right, so you can see that I've cut here to the hinge point and then from the apex out to the hinge point. And all we're gonna do is swing that back to where that dart that was created is closed. And we're gonna tape it down. And there you have done and it looks kind of funny. It does not, it looks, you kind of have a jog here, and that is okay. That is what that's supposed to look like. So you've effectively added the room up here near the arm's eye and tucked that in where it needs it and added the width that you need in um, your crossways to support your bust. Sorry, I'm trying to get this as best as possible here. Okay, so you've added your width here where you need it and also here up into the arm's eye where you need it. Here's the top. Again, I'm hoping you guys can see this okay. Um, and this works a little bit better for larger busts. Now, down here at the bottom, you're going to notice a jog. So you could cut and lower if you want to make your new hemline or stop.
stick with the longer, the longer piece because you need that length in your center front for your bust. And you could just redraw um, back to the original uh, side seam. Actually, which you would need to do because the back needs to match. So you would just redraw your hemline on this one up to the original side seam. Okay? So hopefully that one makes sense. I'm really hoping that these make sense. Okay, the last one is the easiest one and is the one that I tend to use the most. However, um, it is probably the one that's most suited to smaller FBAs as opposed to really big ones. All right, so again, this is the one that I use most of the time, but like I said, I only have um, a three inch difference. Before all my food allergies, I had like a four to five inch difference between my upper bust and my boobs, but my boobs have gone down as I have had to change my eating. So again, you got your apex. And the idea behind this one is that with knits, they stretch and really they provide, um, again, with a smaller FBA, they provide, you know, they'll stretch crosswise to cover your boobs. It may pull tighter than what the pattern's meant to, but most of the time, especially if you're using a very stretchy fabric, you've got enough to go across the boobs comfortably without smushing the girls. However, you still need that length in the, in the top um, because a lot of times it'll make the front of your top come up because it it's longer to go over your boobs than someone, say, with a smaller chest. So, again, we are going to stretch this to fit, um, we're going to ease in the excess length. So I like to go down, we'll go down an inch and a half from the underarm and make a notch, and we're going to do this on the front and the back, and then we'll go down two inches, so you're going to do that on the front and the back. You're going to go down from the underarm an inch and a half-ish, um, make a notch, go down two more inches, and make another notch front and the back. Then you're simply going to draw a line through your bust apex that is perpendicular to um, your grain or to the center front that's cut on the fold. And I am very simply going to just cut and add length right in that spot. So we'll tape it down. I'm going to do a little guideline here. Now how much you need to add here is just kind of dependent. Usually I would add an inch and I find that to be pretty good and that's pretty easy to um, ease back in on the side. So I'm just going to draw an inch below my cut line, line my bottom up there. And tape and then you get your tape all googly holy moly okay <laughs> and then you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a slight jog here at the side seam and then you grab your sharpie marker by the tip because you didn't put the cap on good gracious the easiest way that I like to do this is I bubble it out so I start at this bottom notch that I created and I just kind of freehand and add, you know, about three-eighths of an inch or whatever back to nothing. So you'll add almost like a bubble, which just gives you a little bit of extra room in the um, uh, width there. Okay, and that's it. And again, when you're sewing this one, you're going to stretch the back so that the notches fit with the front. So you've essentially eased in an FBA on that one without having to do a dart. So there you have it. Three different ways to do an FBA, um, well four if you count just a traditional FBA, to do an FBA on a knit top. I hope this makes sense. If not, please send me questions and I will try to explain them to the best of my ability.